Hey Math 31, I had a question on how do you do section 3.2 number 37 and that question is where they gave you a graph of a function and asked you to find the domain and range. So let's get going on that. I'm going to change pen colors. So just to remind you, and we went over this um, in class or you could have seen it on the videos, but domain, it's always dealing with your x values. And we, we set our intervals up, we go left, comma, right, and we'll have to decide if we want parentheses or brackets over here and parentheses or brackets over here. It really depends on the question, um, but we'll, we'll decide that when we get going on the problem. And then for range, we're always looking at the scope of our y values, and we write our intervals up in terms of down to up. And another way of thinking that is both of these intervals, we always go low to high when we write up intervals in math. And when we're talking about x values, right? when we say x, that means left to right, that's low to high. When we say y values, that means down to up, that's how we write low to high. All right, so let's start with the x's. So when it comes to your, your graph, if I'm just giving you a graph like this, or if you're just given a graph like this, the first thing I take a look at is if I have arrows. And if I look at that arrow, I know that it's going to the right forever, and it's also going up forever. And what those forevers are going to translate to, they're both going to translate into positive infinities, and that's going to be on the right and the up end of my intervals. So when I think about my domain so far, and I'll, I'll color code this again, let me go pink. So I know so far for my domain, I don't know what the left bound is, but I know the right bound is going to be an infinity, and an infinities always get parentheses. And the same is true for range. The range, I don't know what the left bound is or the low bound, but I do know the high is going to be infinity. So I've got the right side of my intervals, right? or I should say the high side of my intervals. Now we've got to figure out the low side. All right, so here we go. When we think about domain, we want to go left to right. So if I look at this graph, here is the leftmost point. right? So this is the leftmost point on the graph. There is nothing to the left of it because I have that, that solid dot there. Okay, so if I think about this as an ordered pair, this is the ordered pair negative 3, 0. And when you're talking about domain, you only care about the x variable. So when I go to write up my domain, my leftmost x value that I get is negative 3. And because this is a closed dot, right, it's filled in, it's not an open dot like that, I'm going to put the bracket. I want to include negative 3 in my domain. So that's how we find domain. Now for a range, we need to find the lowest value. So let's look at our graph, all right? And let's see if we can find the lowest point on this graph. Let me erase this. All right, so if I'm taking a look at this, the lowest point also happens to be the same as the leftmost point. But this is the lowest point on my graph. And this, we already know its coordinates are negative 3, 0, but when you're talking about range, you actually care about y values. So when I go to fill in my range, I'm going to put 0 because that's the lowest y value I hit. And again, I actually hit it, oops, there we go, because that is a filled in dot, right? It's not an open dot. That would be open, this is closed. So when you have a hollow dot, that's when you would put the parentheses, but because we have this filled in dot, we're going to put a bracket and we're going to include it in our range. And that's how we get the domain and range. All right, thanks so much, guys. Bye.